Sorry. Can I just interrupt for a second? Oh, I didn't realize you were filming. <laughs> it's just the wall. The wall is your music stand. It's very sturdy. And then we can never get into this closet. Well, I mean, there's already a piano in the way. <laughs> I mean, we could move the piano. We could also move the book. I thought you were going to say we could move the closet. <laughs> well, I mean, you do have the ability. I think I need to make you a music stand. There's one that used to go here. It came with it, but I think we lost it. Along with the power cord? Yeah. We can buy the power cord, though, but I checked online, and the music stand is discontinued. Oh, no. Or, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the music stand that came with this keyboard fits into this slot. We need to take some measurements of the slot. So the opening width, quarter of an inch. This slot is at an angle. So we need to figure out what that angle is and then take my protractor, 70 degrees. And I also wanna know the angle that's formed between this surface and this surface. So we can just put our protractor right there. That looks about right. 27 degrees between these. You want to know the depth of the slot, you can use the depth gauge in our calipers. Three quarters of an inch. The distance between the edge of the slot and the peak, 0.3 inches. Whenever you're designing something that fits into an existing object, it's always a good idea to print a test piece. This is the first test piece that I made, and right away you can tell that the little piece that fits into the slot is too long. Also, if we put our music book on there, I think that leans back at too far of an angle. So for the second piece, I made the tooth shorter and adjusted the angle. That fits in a lot better, but we still have a big gap between our 3D printed piece and the actual peak. I adjusted the angle again for number three. It's better, but there's still space there. But number four, adjusted the angle further, and that's pretty spot on. And it holds our music book at a nice angle. So I'll use the dimensions from this piece wah, to design my final music stand. So we're in Fusion 360 and we have the model of our final test piece. I'm gonna create a new sketch on top of the piece and just project the silhouette. I'm doing this so I don't have to mess with my original sketch which has a whole bunch of dimensions and construction lines. This will make everything way easier. So the first thing I wanna to add to this is the bottom of the music stand. And I want that to be one inch long. And then these 3D printed pieces will hold a piece of wood, which will form the bulk of the music stand. Here's a tip for when you're using calipers to measure the thickness of something. It can be hard to know when your calipers are flat against your material. So if you rock them back and forth, you'll notice the measurement fluctuates and it always falls back to the same low number. The lowest number it reaches when you're applying pressure, that is your true thickness. If you think about this as forming a triangle, Every time you're at a skew angle, the measurement will increase, but it's only when you're perpendicular, when you're measuring the true thickness, will the calipers go to the lowest distance between the two points, which are the two faces of your material. So we wanna add the thickness of that wood as a user parameter. Wood thickness, 0.454 inches. This extend up about two inches and I want this line to be parallel to this. So I'm gonna add a parallel constraint, bring those into parallel, and I'm gonna draw a line wood thickness and then draw another line that is two inches long. I didn't enter an angle because I'm gonna do another parallel constraint, one, two, there we go. Offset this line by our thickness extend that line to hit the bottom, close off the top. I wanna to add a little lip to the front to prevent the music book from just kicking out forwards. So I can just make a rectangle here, 0.05 by 0.05. Fill it those top corners. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna hold shift to select the profiles. I'm gonna create a new parameter, piece length. That slot is 18 inches long, but my print bed is only nine inches long. We also don't need to 3D print a piece to cover the whole slot width. We can do multiple pieces that are all linked together by the wood. So this can pretty much be whatever we want. I think if we do a few of them that are two inches long, that should work pretty well. So now we can extrude 
by our piece length. We can turn off our test piece. So we'll create a new sketch on the back face because we're gonna screw in from the back. I think half an inch from the top will be good and then half an inch from the bottom. So one hole there, one hole there. They are countersunk holes and I already have my screw head diameter parameter in there because I use it all the time as well as my screw shaft diameter. And I need to change this angle to 60 degrees. Lovely. All right, so we got some screw holes. I'm thinking now that it might be good to add a lip in front of the piece of wood. So right at this point, which we conveniently already have, I'm gonna create another one of those little lip rectangles. And then if we edit our extrude feature, I'm gonna include that profile. All right, that is looking like a music stand. I think I'm gonna go ahead and print one and see how it works. Let's do it. So I switched out my red PLA for something a little classier. I think that will look really nice with the wood. It's a pretty tight fit, but that's kind of a good thing. Like it's not gonna be going anywhere once it's in there. Ooh, nice snap into place, lovely. Let's see how the wood fits. The angle looks good. The one thing I'm concerned about is that this is gonna be bendy. It's just gonna bend backwards. In fact, it already is a little bit because this wood is so heavy. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if I can find a lighter piece to use. I don't really have any thin stock. So after realizing how bendy this piece was, I did a pretty substantial redesign. I realized that it needs support in the back and this whole part in the front is pretty much pointless. So what I did, I bulked up everything. I made the back wrap around the back curve of the keyboard. I added some support here, and now this thing is super solid. And I printed four of them. I also angled the back forwards more because I found that, especially with the bending, it was leaning back way too much. So the wood will go on here. Why do you, why do you need the wood though? Well, put a music book on, see what happens. Yeah, physics. <laughs> well, I never took physics. I was too busy doing art. <laughs> I cut the piece of wood to size, rounded the top corners, and now we can screw it in place. I also printed these pieces to extend the tray and link the individual pieces together. They slot into the little lip here and then I have a bigger lip so we can hold bigger music books. So we got one, two, and three. And I'm just gonna super glue those in place. There is three. Do you want to play hooky from work and test it out? Okay. Ooh, it's so upright. Wait, how do I do? Oh, the drums? Yeah. So five, one, five. There you go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the least fun sound. I always thought it sounded like a dog. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to support my bone addiction, not what you think it is, buying bones for my animal, <laughs> my dog, like and subscribe. You can also support Morley by checking out his Patreon. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Do you want to play us out? <laughs> there you go. That's all you got.